so many adjustments we've made over the last five, six months, isn't there? <laughs> Amen. Um, just, uh, you can be seated for a few moments. It's just a couple of things that I just wanted to address before uh, get into the message. Uh, we do have, uh, of course, Brother McLaughlin coming to preach for us um, next weekend. And so we will be having a service at 6 o'clock on Saturday night. It would be great if we could be here at 5.30 to pray ahead of time. And, uh, and then we're just going to have church after that. And then, of course, on Sunday, it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to start at 10 o'clock. And uh, at 10 o'clock, uh, Sister McLaughlin is going to be speaking to us, and she also is a licensed minister, so uh, she's got, uh, wrote a book or got a book out there as well and just uh, does a tremendous job, and so we're looking forward to that. And then, of course, for our main service at 11 o'clock, uh, Brother McLaughlin is going to be preaching for us again. So uh, here's the deal. We want to invite some people out. Amen. Just as many people as you can, invite them out to services Saturday night and then, of course, for Sunday, for the two services on Sunday as well. Uh, let's remember uh, to invite as many as we can to come to those. Um, I had something else on my mind. Do not forget that if we have visitors coming, um, we want to make sure that we are social distancing. We want to make sure that we're using our sanitizer at the back both coming in and going out, and this will help as far as cleaning things go and uh, making sure that everything is uh, uh, taken care of. I'm still missing something, something in my mind. It's probably come to me in the middle of my message. Maybe at tonight, 3 o'clock in the morning, I'll remember. And I'll phone all of you right at that time. Make sure that you have all the information. Um, man, oh, I know what it was. It came to me now, see? Look, just like that. This coming Tuesday, uh, some of us are going to be away for our conference. They're having our, making some adjustments. Conference is a little bit different this year. Uh, there's just going to be the ministry and their wives that are going to be attending our camp uh, because of COVID and social distancing. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit different in the fact that we're all going to have to uh, participate in that. Uh, at our campground, but the difference is, is that none of you that aren't ministry are going to be able to be there. Now, um, as we're not going to be here for Tuesday night Bible study, we do have Brother uh, Raymond Woodward is going to be speaking on Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and Thursday night at our campground. And uh, so that is, uh, if you've never heard Brother Woodward speak, my goodness, just tremendous, tremendous messages and insight into the Scripture. Uh, I've never, any time that I've heard him speak, never ceased to be amazed by uh, some of the things that he brings out from Scripture. So on Tuesday night, all of these are going to be broadcast uh, via our um, BC, UPC district website. So you can get on that website. So rather than having Tuesday night service this coming week, uh, if you can all uh, get on that website and uh, watch Brother Woodward and hear that message, you'll be able to do so live. Uh, I'm hoping providing everything works. And likewise, for Wednesday night and Thursday night, yes. Hmm. Sorry, I missed that. Okay, Brother Dylan is going to be preaching Tuesday night and then Brother Woodward the next few nights. So um, please join us online for those services. I'm sure they're going to be great messages and uh, participate with the district as far as uh, uh, you can participate from home. Let's stand together, shall we? Amen. It's good to see you all. You all happy? Hey man, everybody smile. That's it. You're all you're all smiling. Oh, okay. Alrighty, we're good with that. We're going to go to the book of Jonah today, and uh, chapter one, verses one through three. And we're going to be preaching about this man. Uh, as you've noticed, over the last little while, I've taken some characters from the Bible, some individuals, 
and uh, preach from their lives, or at least a little bit from their lives, and and I'm going to continue to do so today. We're going to preach from Jonah, a man with a choice to make, a man with a choice to make. And so we're going to be reading Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, and then we'll talk a little bit more uh, from the book of Jonah a little bit as we go through this message together. So very important with the Word of God. What's important on your side? Listen, right? Good ground. So uh, Jesus in his parable of the ground uh, gave four types of ground, but then at the end he said, be careful how you how you hear or listen because in that is dependent upon what kind of ground you're going to be. And so how we, how we approach the Word of God and how we absorb the Word of God is vitally important and then, of course, what we do with it after it gets in. So the first number one is wayside ground. Don't just reject it, right? Okay. Don't be stony ground. Don't be thorny ground. Everybody said amen. Amen. Don't let the world just impact or take away what you have gotten from the Word of God. So Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. But Jonah rose, now look at this, to flee to Tarshish, from the presence of the Lord, and he went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish, and so he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish, and again it says, away from the presence of the Lord. Amen. Let's pray together, shall we? Thank you, Lord, so very much for your word today. I thank you, Jesus, that we can... God, that we can study your word, that we can have your word become a part of our lives and that it can change us, help us, Lord, to be uh, more like you in every way in our lives. Jesus, I know it is my desire for my life, Lord, that I would be able to not only absorb your word, but, but Father, that through it, Jesus, you might transform me and help me, Lord, in every way, every day to become a little bit more like you. Thank you for your word. Pray that it has the desired effect that you placed it in our uh, keeping for and that it touches every life, every soul, whether they're in this sanctuary, whether they're watching online. But each one will be, uh, will be affected by your word today. And I pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Now, I had some questions of people coming in. Are those steps going to stay like that or that porch? I notice there's a multitude. Of, you'll notice different colors out there. The tears are gray. Some of the ups is gray. And, and then there's some that are still blue and green and all sorts of things. And uh, hopefully one day soon it's going to all be worked out and it'll all look wonderful. <laughs> We're working on it slowly, making our way through it. So uh, just so you know. Um, Choices, choices that we make. How many of you uh, uh, give, I guess, time and energy to making sure you make the right choices? Sometimes? All of them? Not all of them, surely. Uh, I know some choices that we make don't impact our lives uh, in a great manner that, uh, that you would notice, or they're even that lasting in our lives. Um, Others, others can affect our lifestyle or our health for a long time or for the rest of our lives. You can begin by having poor dietary habits and end up having something that affects you because of those dietary habits. You may not think it's going to affect you when you first start, but in the end result, it can have that effect. You may, you may start off just being a couch potato potato and uh, playing games or watching TV and, and not getting up and moving, sooner or later, that kind of lifestyle is going to affect your health and your strength and your ability to be able to do things. So I, um, I was trying to think of some different ones that didn't make a lot of difference in our lives. And, and I was thinking back to when I was young and at 16 or 17, I bought myself a brand new 1969 Mach 1 Mustang. It was just my dream car. It was awesome, and it could move very, very fast. My friend, one of my closest friends, on the other hand, 
uh, was not quite so adventurous. He bought a Volkswagen Bug. Now, obviously it had an effect on my life because I got a whole lot more speeding tickets than he did. Fact is, I got enough so that eventually my wife actually, uh, before we were married, I gave her the keys to the car and my credit card, and, and she had to drive me around because I lost my license. He, on the other hand, didn't get very many tickets. He did, however, get one that I have to tell you about today. We were in Guilford parking lot over in Surrey, and it had snowed out. My, him and myself and my cousin uh, had decided we were going to bumper ski in the Guilford parking lot. It was... The shopping center was closed, and there was no cars there, and, and so uh, my cousin and myself, you know, Dave's driving, and my cousin and myself grab hold of the bumper, and, and we're, he's just flying around the parking lot, and we're holding on, and, and just having a great time. Well, he's getting left out because he's driving, so he has a bright idea that these Volkswagens, you know, they had a choke that you could pull out, right? A manual choke, so he pulled out the choke, went down the side of the car, and now three of us are grabbed a hold of the bumper and nobody's driving anymore. So the way we would steer it to miss all the lampposts is we would just, you know, kind of shift our weight and that would skid the front end over and we'd be able to go around the lamppost. Well, the cops saw us. And uh, so they pulled us over, and uh, we had to, uh, Don and I digging in our heels, my cousin and I digging in our heels to try and slow it down so Dave can get back up into the driver's seat and stop the vehicle. And the cops came in and gave him a six-point ticket. I had never had a six-point ticket. Undue care and attention. He says, how can I get an undue care and attention? I wasn't even driving. <laughs> but all the decisions that we make... Uh, have, have an effect of some sort in our lives. Just some are not lasting or don't impact our lives in, in a great, uh, great manner. We can make some choices when we're younger, and I remember this from when I was, uh, you'd have to be my age to understand this. That there was a lot of drugs that were first starting to go around at, uh, when I was in later part of elementary school and towards junior high. I got offered, LSD was one of the big ones, and marijuana a little bit less so, but LSD was one of the big ones, and I got offered uh, drugs when I was, I think, about grade five or six. Now, you've got a choice, right? So, some of my friends, relatives as well, made the wrong choice. They decided, oh, I've got to try this. And before long, you find out that, uh, that, that what they have tried or what they have done that one time is now going to become a habit in their lives and it's going to change their lives forever. And uh, I was, uh, I don't know whether I was just scared or what, but I said no or smart. You can you put it scared or smart, right? One or the other, whichever you choose to, I, I'm good with that. Uh, but I said, no, I wasn't going to do any of that stuff. And, uh, and so I made that choice. And so I've never, never since then done that or, or been involved in any of that. So I'm glad for that. I wonder if sometimes, you know, do you ever wonder sometimes whether God was affecting your life even back then for the decisions that you made? Because I kind of think that maybe God had a hand in it. He knew that someday I was going to say yes to him. And so that he made sure that, uh, that there were some things in my life that I wasn't going to become attached to. Other choices that we make are much more important and have an impact not only for this lifetime but for the lifetime to come. We see some examples of this in the Bible. The Bible tells us that Moses, uh, he made a choice to suffer the afflictions with the people of God rather than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. He made that choice. Now, he was a prince of Egypt. He was educated in all the ways that Egypt was educated or, or the higher-ups and the royalty of Egypt were educated. He had money. He had material things. But he chose to align himself with the people of God rather than uh, have all of the things that he could have had as a prince of Egypt. Solomon made a poor choice. He chose, choice, uh, he chose, if I can say it, he chose to involve himself with something that uh, the God of Israel had told them that they were not to do, and that was to take wives outside of the nation of Israel. But he had many of them. He had wives that he chose and took that were heathen wives. He even went to the degree of setting up for them places of worship where they could worship their gods. 
and where they could go in and, and offer sacrifices and all the rest of it. And eventually, of course, his wives that were heathens drew him away from God. And uh, Solomon backslid for a time away from God. I'm, I'm assuming that he got back to God just because of the last verses out of the book of Ecclesiastes that he wrote. The Bible tells us in New Testament that a man by the name of Demas made a choice to love this present world rather than to love and follow God. And as a result of that, Paul tells us that Demas has forsaken me for love of this present world. Paul chose a different lifestyle. Paul made a choice when that uh, bright light shone and the voice from heaven happened that he was going to change his life completely, dedicate his life to following the one that had so impacted his life on the road to Damascus. And uh, he gave his life to the ministry of the Word and the ministry of Jesus Christ from that point onward. Decisions, important decisions that we can make for our lives. But let me tell you something. They're not just decisions at the beginning of our relationship with God. As we've noticed with, uh, with Solomon, with Demas, and, and with Paul, they're decisions that we make on an ongoing basis as children of God. We've got to make the right decisions because you see the wrong one can put us on a path that's going to lead us in the wrong direction. Joel chapter 3 verse 14 tells us this. It says, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of the decision. But then it goes on to say this. Just a great verse, by the way. The Lord is near in the valley of decision. So, any time that you come to a crisis point, any time that you come to a, a fork in the roads that is going to affect your life spiritually and in, in eternity, I want you to know God's right there at that fork in the road. God's there to help you to make the right decision. I would guarantee you today, because I've known, I've felt this, that in those times of important decisions in my life, that God is urging me to make the right one. And of course, there's the other side, the flesh and the enemy would like you to make the wrong one. But it's so good to know that the promise is there that God is going to be there in the valley of decision when those times come. And the Bible says uh, that the word of the Lord came to Jonah. The Bible doesn't tell us a whole lot about Jonah's life prior to this. It just says at the very beginning of the book of Jonah, the word of the Lord came to him. To this man, written down in our word as a prophet, to this man, God revealed his will and his purpose for his life. Pretty amazing, right? That in the midst of everything that God would choose to just, just come down and speak to this man and, and give him such a specific direction as to his will for, their, for his life. I do believe that God does so today for each and every one of us. I think that God speaks to us at times in our lives. I think sometimes we hear more clearly than at other times. I think at times we can be distracted by the things that are around us and things that we want to do and, and what others feel like we should do and what others pressure us to do. And sometimes we miss hearing the Word of God. But, but I do believe in all of our lives that we've all felt at one time or another the hand of God and the voice of God beginning to speak to us, beginning to draw us, beginning to point in the direction that He would have our lives to go. I can remember back when I was a, a young man, I guess, or, or maybe even prior to that, that my parents had me going to Sunday school. And I, I can remember times where, uh, where we would... I would feel the presence of God. And I remember a specific time, I think I was a teenager at that point, and not much interest in serving God. And, and uh, some of my friends convinced us to go to a, a crusade that was happening in, in Empire Stadium there. And, and I remember going into that, and we sat way up at the back, as far away from the platform as I could possibly sit. Billy Graham down on the, on the platform down below and he preached a message his messages were not complex they were mostly about the love and the mercy of God and I, rem I don't remember the context of that message but I remember feeling God's presence during that time the beginning of God's drawing you see God's hand was beginning to move in my life I had reached the age where I needed to make some decisions that were going to be important for me and I felt the hand of God and I, I understood that God was moving in my life I can remember times 
uh, growing up, even then and, and before that, when I would give my life to and, and say, God, I want you to have my life and I want you to use me. And then at the age, of course, 15 and 16 and so forth, I, I fell away from that and left off even thinking about serving God. But I do believe that God's Spirit, God is near to each and every one of us. He's going to speak to us through His Spirit, through His Word, through people that He places in our lives, and through the preaching of the Word should we involve ourselves in, and make sure that we're going to be in a church where we can hear the preaching of God's Word. The Bible tells us that we're saved by the foolishness of preaching. God is near in this room right now just because, not because I'm anything great, because the Bible says that it's foolishness of preaching. But it is because that God wants to speak to each and every one of you in your lives. Whether you're in this sanctuary, whether you're watching online, God is working right now through the preaching of His Word. Amen. God's direction in our lives is, of course, that we would give our lives and to serve Him. Going back to this man, Jonah, there are two destinations on Jonah's map. He can go and uh, he can go to Nineveh or he can go to Tarshish. Nineveh it was at that time, or at least back then, uh, was the capital of ancient Assyria. It was a wicked, wicked city. They had human sacrifice. They had so many uh, perverse and terrible things that were going on in that city that that the the reputation of Nineveh arose into God's kingdom, and God decided that it was time that they were going to be judged. I have to wonder sometimes, when you, you begin to look around at what's going on in our world today, you have to wonder how long God's going to last before He comes in judgment to our world. So many things, and so many things have changed, and so many lifestyles have changed. Some of the things our parents would, would just absolutely be aghast by what's going on in our culture today. And it's a funny thing how easily society has accepted that. And how easily some churches and denominations have accepted it. When we know today that all of those things are contrary to the will of God. Contrary to the Word of God. And yet here we are at this place and you have to wonder how long God's going to withhold. God's going to stand back and not come in judgment. But God's judgment had been pronounced on Nineveh. He had decided that because of their... Uh, their sinfulness and their perversity and all that went on within that city, that, uh, that judgment was going to come. And, uh, and so he came to Jonah and he says, I want you to go to this city, I want you to go to Nineveh, and you need to tell them that they're going to be destroyed. There was no opportunity in, it, in Jonah's message for them to repent. It was just that God's judgment was coming. There was no... Oh, if you repent, God will change his mind. There was no, if you give your lives to God right now, God will do differently than what he said he would do. The message was really simple. Judgment is coming. This was the city that God directed him to. In that city, if he had chosen to go there, he would have had the approval of God in his life. Listen, Sometimes the areas that God asks us to move towards may not be easy and it may not be the most attractive, but I want you to know that what makes it right is the fact that God's going to be with us through it all. God would have been with Jonah every step of the way, every moment that he traveled, every time that he preached, every, every time he stood before the city of Nineveh and proclaimed judgment on them, God would have stood by his side to affirm his word. God would have given him the peace and the joy that comes with knowing that he was in the will of God and that the destination for his life then was going to be a positive one. Or he has Tarshish. According to some reading that I did, Tarshish was Spain. And if you look at a map of where these two places were, and here he is in Israel, and, and uh, the one is off to the east and the other one is to the west. And, and so we find in Tarshish that that uh, Jonah decides that he's going to go in the opposite direction from the direction that God wants him to go in. When God wanted him to go east to Nineveh. Jonah decided to go west to, to Tarshish or Spain and, and away, the Bible says, not only from, from the direction that God wanted him to go in, but also away from the presence of the Lord. Can I just tell you today that disobedience to the Word of God in your life is to walk away from God Himself? 
That when you make a choice to say no to God, when you make a choice to go in the direction that is away from the direction that God is urging you to go in, that you are going away from God Himself. And you are moving your life in a direction where God is not going to be able to be a part of it. No longer would he know if he went to Tarshish the peace and the joy that comes with knowing that it is well with my soul. No longer would he be able to be assured that when judgment came or his life ended that his destination would be the right one. So here we find Jonah going over to Joppa, a seaside port, sitting on the wharf, looking at possible two possible destinations for his life. Red eyes, haggard, no sleep, hadn't slept since God had spoken to him, fighting every moment of the way against the will of God for his life. I watched my dad for years and years do this. I watched him when he would go to church because it was part of the agreement I think they made when he married my mom that he would be involved some way in Christianity. And, and But my dad wasn't living for God. He would go to church and every time the altar would would happen, you'd see my dad standing at the back and his hands would grip and his knuckles would turn white and he would hold on to that pew for dear life rather than make his way towards the altar. It's funny how that happens. It's funny how people fight so hard against what is going to be nothing but good and, and joy and peace in their lives and they fight against it so much. Jonah is fighting against the will of God. Two, two places that he can go to. And finally, he books passage on a ship away from the presence of God. He books passage on a ship to Tarshish. It's two places, two destinations for our lives today. And it's not just at the beginning when we should choose to decide to live for God or not, but it is throughout our lives that these decisions are re re-brought to the forefront because you see it is always God's will that we re rededicate that we recommit ourselves to the kingdom of God and to serving God and giving our lives to God and so we face times in our lives again and again where we come to a fork in the road and we have to make the decision that is necessary for ourselves and for our families Matthew chapter 7 verses 13 and 14 says this Jesus's words Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Many there be that go thereout, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Scripture that I had up on the overhead at the beginning of, before we began service is uh, from Moses' writings, and uh, he says, I have set before you life and death, cursing and blessing. Therefore, choose life. Therefore, choose obedience. Therefore, choose the right path. And, uh, and so it is that, that uh, Jonah chose disobedience. But we have a choice today. We can cho choose to be obedient to God. And in that, choosing to be obedient to what God has for our lives, we will know the joy of God in our lives. The joy that is not happiness that is fleeting or dependent upon what we have or the amount of popularity or position or friends or whatever it may be, but the joy that comes with knowing that I have a relationship with the God of heaven. We can know what it is to have peace in our lives. The Bible calls it peace that is beyond the understanding of those that are in this world. To know, and I love that song, that it is well, it is well with my soul to know also that if death should claim me or judgment should come on this world that in that judgment or in that death that I know that there is a place that is prepared for me in my obedience to God so Jonah gets on this ship uh, musicians you can come I'm getting close to finishing up uh, Jonah gets on this ship heading to Tarshish Maybe because of exhaustion, maybe because that uh, finally he's made his decision and that decision is final, at least he feels like it is, but he falls asleep. These are dangerous times for Jonah. Not only has he chosen to disobey God and walk away from what God would want and desire for his life, 
But now the Bible says he fell asleep. Have you noticed, I don't know if you've noticed this, but I've noticed this in my own life. Whenever, whenever I've stepped away from, from what God desires for my life, there's almost a place where you want that spiritual sleep. You, want, you don't want to be aware of what's going on spiritually. Not on the good side or the bad side. And so you kind of reject any positive things that God may want to do in your life. But along with it, you don't feel the other side neither. Because you become spiritually dead to the things that are around you. And I believe today that God is speaking to every individual person that's in this world today to draw them. Because you see, it's God's will that all come to repentance. It's God's will that everyone would be saved. And so God is speaking to them, well, why don't they hear Him? Why don't they say yes to Him? Why is it that it just seems to be a few? Because spiritually they have made that choice to go away from God's desire for their lives. And along the way they fell asleep spiritually as Jonah did. Now aren't you glad for the mercy and the love of God? Amen. Because you see, God still loves people even when they walk away. Even when they slide back. Even when they make those mistakes. God's love it just doesn't end because you turn around and walk away. And so a storm has come and engulfed this ship. And in the midst of the storm, and there's winds and waves and all the rest of it. And in the bow of that, or in the, in the midst of that ship, there's Jonah fast asleep still. Not even recognizing the storm that is happening. Can I tell you something today? You need to at times be thankful for the storms that God allows to come your way. Because they may come with the reason that you have to have your attention re- put back on what is important on what is the will of God for your life it is God's way of getting your attention that storm is the mercy and the love and the evidence of that love in your life that that this would happen so that your attention would be back where it needs to but in the midst of that Jonah's still asleep and finally somebody in the ship goes down into the hold and and there he is fast asleep and he shakes Jonah he says wake up don't you care that we're perishing and they drew lots, and of course, who, whose fault it was that this storm was happening and the ship was going to get wrecked, and the lot fell on Jonah. And uh, finally, listen, it's funny, when, the, when God finally gets a hold of a man that before he wasn't willing to go preach to a whole city, that judgment was coming, but for the sake of a few sailors on that ship, now Jonah says, throw me in. Whoa. What a change that God brings into our lives. The mercy of God today for each and every one of us is that God keeps bringing us back to that place of making a decision that we're going to give our lives completely and wholly to Him. Let's stand together, shall we? Storms are sometimes happen in our lives and I know that at times we wonder and we question and we... We sometimes get angry and we get upset about these storms and things that have happened in our lives. But, but sometimes these storms that God allows to come into our lives are there to get our attention. They're there to awaken us to the fact that we need to come back and give our lives again to the one that gave his life to us, for us. God will send people to awaken us think that sometimes that's all that preaching is. It's meant to bring people to a place where they will be awake spiritually and give their lives again to God and be willing to, to do what God has asked them to do. Not sure where altogether that God has each and every one of us or where we stand with God today. But I can tell you something today. I believe that God is speaking to each and every one of us. We've got a world out there that is dying. We've got a world out there that is in the midst of such fear with regarding to what is going on, whether it is because of COVID or politics or whatever it may be in our world right now. But there is so much fear that is happening in our world and God is speaking to people that here's where that fear can go because His love... Perfect love casts out all fear. I want you to know today that we need to 
We need to have the spirit of Jonah today after the storm. Whatever it takes, I need to make sure that others have an opportunity to live. My life needs to be given so that, so that others can have an opportunity to know the Jesus Christ that changed my life. And they might have an opportunity to get to know Him as well. So at the end of this service today and at the end of this message, decision. Why don't we make that decision together today? Father, whatever it is that you desire for my life, that's what I want to give you today. Father, whoever it is that you would want me to speak to, I'm going to speak to them today. Father, wherever you would have me to go, Lord, I want to go where you want me to go today. Hallelujah. This altar is open if you want to come and pray. You can pray where you're at. And uh, if you've got a certain group of people that you're comfortable with praying with, please join yourselves together. Pray for those that, that you know or you want to join yourselves together with them to help them pray or maybe they can help you. But let's pray and let's just give ourselves again. Let's make that decision. Lord, here is my life. Use me. Here is my life. Whatever you desire to do with it. Hallelujah. Let's find ourselves a place, shall we? And you're welcome to come to this altar as well.